Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's discuss about Next.js 13, which has been making a lot of headlines, a lot of controversy as well on Twitter with the release of an awesome feature with a bunch of new features like Turbo Pack and React RSC finally coming to Next.js. Let's talk about everything in this video and what does that mean for you as a developer in today's time. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So let's just jump directly to Next.js 13 documentation, the blog, the release blog, and one of the biggest changes, the first change, let's discuss this about app directory. So this change, first of all, is in beta. That's one thing which we have to realize. The second thing is on a very high level overview, the way this works is that it uses a new concept known as layouts in Next.js, which is a way of rendering or organizing your application. So, so far, what Next.js did was that you would create a file in the pages folder and it will be rendered as a layout, as a, as a page, standalone page. But now with the layouts RFC and this layouts whole proposal, Next.js went into the direction where Remix was with nested layouts. That means that your layout, instead of being dependent only on a single file, gets constructed through multiple files, right? So let's say you have a complex app with a bunch of navigations where a sidebar contains the navigation links and the main content is the one which changes before the layouts rfc before this infrastructure every single one of those pages has to include the full components right with this you only have to include the main component in separate files and the sidebar remains in a single component the layout the overall layout remains in a single file or you know without getting changed at all through navigations or through transitions we will discuss about this in technical tutorials in next year's 13 tutorials and guidelines in much more depth but what you need to understand is that this is like a completely new way of writing code for your pages in next year's the next important thing which is highlighted over here is server components. Now server components officially was introduced in React almost like a year back but Next.js actually makes it useful. Why? Because you need a framework, you need a server side rendered thing in order to render it properly. Otherwise, you will have to write a lot of boilerplate code, a lot of stitches in the code by yourself if you're using React natively on the server. So Next.js is also like one of the releases which uses React 18 properly. I have done a video in the past on how React server components work. So make sure to check that out to actually understand what server components are what they bring in terms of value and how to use them with react another thing that next.js and Versal managed to pull off just in time is streaming now streaming is something which you can do which means that your page would render as a stream right when you talk about a stream you see that not everything comes at once things can come in part. Similarly, what streaming means is that whatever parts of your page are ready, they can be streamed to the client, it will be rendered, and rest of the things which require more time, maybe because of some network calls or database calls or some components which require additional time to render, they can come as they are ready. So you see it mentions that when deployed to Vercel, this is important, next year's 13 applications that uses the app directory will stream responses automatically through Node.js and H runtimes. Now, one of the interesting things about this thing is that Vercel runs Node.js on AWS Lambdas and AWS Lambdas do not support streaming like natively. So they managed to end up somehow hacking around that infrastructure and supporting streaming even for that AWS Lambda thing. So that is like super interesting. Versal has not made it publicly available how they have done that, but it's it's impressive. Okay, so one of the controversial things which Next.js has done is in this section, is in the data fetching section. Now what Next.js did, and I don't know, like we'll discuss about my views later, but I'll just explain what Next.js did, is that it extended fetch or it not exactly extended fetch, it actually rewrote parts of the fetch API. Now fetch is something which is populated by the browser, the fetch API or the runtime like Node.js or even Cloudflare workers. So what it does is now instead of having get server side props or get static props and all those things, it made fetch as a single one true API, right? One flexible API to fetch, cache and revalidate data at component level. So what that means is that let's say if we consider an example like this, where the cache is specified to be force cache, 
Now this is the default where uh, you know like you would behave in get static props where your page will not change the data until and unless it is redeployed right so similarly when you fetch anything using this new infrastructure within the component itself because now there is no separation of you know get server side props get static props all that stuff it's all one and the same thing so when you do something like this it now fetches using force cache instead of the regular fetch utility that means that the next time someone refreshes this page or visits this again it will be served directly from versal cdn it will not perform the fetch request again just like how get static props work then you have a second variant of fetch which is no store which means it will fetch on every single time just like how get server side props work so you know the api is unified it's fetch now but the thing the way you specify the cache changes how it behaves right so if you have this then it will act almost like get server side props so maybe something which you want to be refreshed every single refresh this is how you will do it finally you also have a specific next thing like cache still exists in the fetch api so i mean that's that's fair but next this next over here is a specific injection by nextjs which allows you to specify a revalidation parameter which will behave like how get static props work inside of uh, nextjs 12 or earlier with a revalidate option so this is something which is controversial because people on twitter are not liking the fact that now nextjs and react are messing up with globals but defined globals right because it's usually considered as a bad practice if you try to override or if you try to extend it in ways which might break existing functionality or which might break functionality introduced in future by the official spec right one of the biggest problems with javascript with the libraries like moo tools for example from the past was that it extended a lot of things on string prototype or array prototype which led to ECMAScript, the community, to not use the same names of the functions and the variables because it might break the web later down the line. So maybe that is one of the reasons why people are upset. Maybe some people are just generally upset about, hey, why can you override and how can you override global API like fetch? But I mean, in my opinion, Cloudflare does that on the server, right, in their own workers. So if Next.js is able to do that, as long as this is only valid on the server side and not on the client side, then I think it's fair because they are just defining a runtime API by themselves, right? But again, I mean, it depends on certain more nuances and how this API gets to mature and gets to be used but yeah i mean for now i personally don't see a huge downside or a huge problem with this myself using in this using this for my own projects or even in the company project but yeah i would love to see your opinion on what do you think about this now here's the biggest thing about nextjs 13 it introduces something known as turbo pack now turbo pack is not something to take lightly first of all because it's a new bundler number one competing with webpack and number two, the reason why this is important is Turbo Pack is being authored and being led by the author of Webpack, the creator of Webpack. So Versal has been hiring people of very high, I don't know, like very high authority from Google, from Webpack, from these tools which are very popular inside developer community and they have been asking these people to lead developments on new and better shiny tools so turbo pack is built by the author the creator of webpack and this is a huge thing because if you ask the creator of webpack to build a better tool chances are they would not make a mistake because obviously they have been involved for almost like a decade or so for the webpack community within the webpack community and then no ins and outs of what works what does not work so turbo pack is a rust based rust based successor to webpack how it says it i mean i'm not really a fan of this marketing because it's not really a successor a successor would have at least some sort of backwards compatibility turbo pack on the other hand is fully incompatible with webpack plugin support which is the most important thing right now so you can't use any of the plugins for obvious reasons with webpack which you use with turbo pack which you use with webpack so Versal plans to port most popular plugins yes they do plan to port it but it's still not like you know it's not a 
one-on-one -on -one successor as such. So Vercel want TurboPack to be the web's next generation builder, right? An important and a bold claim to take, but a company like Vercel, I'm sure can pull that off. Now again, a second controversial topic from Vercel was that how fast exactly is TurboPack? There has been some debates on Twitter by um, the author of Wheat that TurboPack claims are actually false over here and Wheat is not as slow as it is, it, it is portrayed to be or TurboPack is not as fast as it is portrayed to be which we'll have to see like once the you know dust settles down and Vercel answers officially what does that mean for them but for now the claims for TurboPack are huge in terms of the speed and the performance I mean Wheat is you know built on ES build which is which, which is usually considered the state-of-the-art bundler, right? And if something is more powerful than ES build, then you have to pay attention. And when, you know, if it is mentioning almost like a 5 to 6x time speed increase, then you have to really pay attention because ES build was the state-of-the-art thing. And if something built in Rust, like Turbo Pack, can blow ES build out of proportions as well, then I mean that's that's awesome, right? So there are tricks and techniques which Turbo Pack uses to unlock even greater performance than ES build, which we will cover maybe in some intermediate to advanced video. But this is this is like a super interesting thing, super interesting update from Vercel introducing a new, completely new web bundler. I mean, like this is like amazing work. If this starts working and if this starts picking up momentum, this could easily be one of the best tools Vercel has given the web because the Turbo pack then can be used outside of Next.js as well in regular projects, in a Svelte project, Vue project, any other sort of technology as well. And the most benefit people will get would be in bigger projects because Webpack also fairly works fine with smaller projects. But the problem arises when you have bigger projects and the problem arises when you are building for production. So if TurboPack is super fast in development, it might as well be super fast in production also based on the architecture it works on. One of the other things which Vercel was, you know, being um, accused of in a way is that how can it be 700 times faster than Webpack when it's only four times faster faster in cold starts right so i mean 700 times is a massive number it's a massive increase it's not 700 percent it's 700 times right so this two times is like you know 100 percent increase so think about 700 it's it's a huge number it's a huge number in per performance and percentages Whereas 4x is not, you know, comparatively, relatively, it's not a huge number. So yeah, I mean, so that is one of the things again, which we will see as time goes by and people figure out how to work with Turbo Pack in general. So I'm excited to see how that unfolds as well. Other updates include things like updates to next image component, which again is rebuilt from ground up in terms of now using native image component to serve it. It obviously makes the images faster on the web it, it makes it less javascripty that means you're shipping less javascript it improves the core web vitals it gets all the good stuff so it's a small update relatively considering next 13 but it's an important one then another interesting thing which next js 13 introduces is the support for next fonts which is almost they pitch it almost like a brand new font system the way it works is now you import fonts directly in your code base and you use them in a way where the Next.js bundler would bundle the font in line in your source code. So you pretty much download nothing from a remote server or a remote CDN, right? So that means that no requests are sent to the Google by the browser because all of the bundling and all of the inlining of the font is done at the build time itself if you use this API. This makes it much faster and much snappier for your website to use these fonts. Another update is that Nextlink finally now no longer requires adding anchor tag as a child. This has been like one of the most common frustration and the things with Next 13 and with Next 12 and earlier that you have to add a link tag. Then you also have to add an anchor tag. If you miss it, then you'll get a nasty warning in the console but no longer that is the case. Link tag would automatically create anchor tags if it finds that there is no tag. 
present. And the good thing about Next.js 13 is for these couple of updates on the link and the image front, they do provide code mods, which means that they can automatically change and upgrade your code base to use these new functionalities without you doing a lot of work. Finally, this was something which was already released ahead of time, but Next.js 13 includes this inside of their release notes, that is open graph image generation with a new library, Versal OG, which uses Satori under the hood for rendering image responses very quickly and very fast without using a headless browser. This can run as a WASM binary, so you don't even need to spin up any sort of browser at all. It can run within your browser itself. It can run within Node.js or any sort of environment which supports WebAssembly. Middleware also gets an update. So that means that now you can finally again return responses from middlewares. Earlier, Next.js killed this ability and Next.js asked that you can only use middlewares to redirect requests to other paths but that has now been changed again it has been reintroduced that you can send responses from the middleware directly which is important because a lot of times you use middleware to you know for authentication or something which which requires an immediate cutoff if the user is not authorized and that case is useful for these middleware things. One of the most important changes which, which Next.js has done is that it has made the React requirement from minimum of 17 to 18. Now this is an important change because React 18 works on concurrent mode, right? And concurrent mode has a problem, not exactly a problem, but has something which we have also discussed in the past in a video, that React 18, if running inside of concurrent mode, can fire your use effect twice, right? Even with no dependency in it. Now, the reason for that is how React slicing works in the new concurrent mode and how React overall works. Now, the reason for that is how React 18 works overall. I'm not gonna get into that because that is already covered in a previous video. But what that means is that upgrading to next 13 immediately, your big, big projects, if you upgrade them immediately, onto React 18 and onto these concurrent mode will break, will most likely break your code if it is using some sort of practices which you should not be, right? Like, uh, you know, just where the behavior where running maybe use effect twice might be breaking your code base. And the best way to do that is to actually upgrade it, check because in development mode, React 18 always fires use effect twice because on production it might fire, right? But on development, it always fires it twice so that it, there is no side effect or anything like that. So this is one thing which might be a bummer for big projects to immediately upgrade if they are using some bad practices. But yeah, you'll have to take a look at this for yourself if you want to check what's up. But yeah, that's pretty much it for Next.js 13. A lot of updates packed into it. I'm super excited to try out Next.js 13 myself. But I mean, obviously it comes with a few controversies attached specifically to Turbo Pack stats, right? And with the new layouts RFC and the, all the nesting layout things. So, I mean, that is one thing which has been going on on Twitter for a while. Um, but that's interesting to see how Next.js gets it, gets the app directory out of beta gets everything up and running and one of the things which i would want to show before the video ends is that nextjs also comes with a new set of documentation so if you go to beta.nextjs.org slash docs you're gonna see a set of new docs which look you know beautiful most likely they're also using rfc uh this layouts rfc which is recently introduced they are also using most likely streaming and all the new features but if you go to stable docs if you check this out this is probably built on top of next.js 12 and you know the non rsc parts so yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you liked it if you did make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching